Come on, bro. Yeah. Amen. Life was objects. Right. We're going to worship and pray to God. He's been taking care of us since the beginning. Well, yeah. So I think that's very commendable. Uh, and thank you, Brother Van Cleve, again. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. For some probably a little tired. I know it's, it's uh, pre Black Friday, from what I understand. Uh, that's a first for me. Uh, some of us may have run out the streets for the pre sale. Uh, which will take place later on this uh, Thursday, I believe, on Friday. Uh, but we're here, we're alive, we're awake, we're going to keep moving. Uh, always, I'm thankful and gracious and grateful, rather, for the opportunity to share God's Word with you. And I do appreciate the knowledge, our leadership, and their support. I encourage you to continue to keep uh, Brother Hubbard and others who are away uh, this time in Texas, keep them in our prayers and safe travels uh, as we're going to and from. Uh, and I, I, you know, I can't go on any further without acknowledging my wife. Uh, for the support that she gives to me always, and working with our two wonderful children, uh, we will take your energy uh, as fast as you get it, we'll take it from you. Hang in there. <laughs> I know, we, we, we had it actually, we had a moment to, to, to steal some time away on Friday. We, we sent the kids over to grandma and granddaddies, and, and uh, that was nice, and uh, wonderful. We went to, with the musical Color Purple, our high school is just putting that on the musical. Uh, and, and after that was over, it was, it was pretty late, it was about 10 something, and my wife and I, we, we wanted to catch a movie because anytime we have uh, free time away from the children, it's just nice to you know, catch a flick every now and then and eat popcorn uh, without them trying to ask for something. <laughs> you know, we, we left it's about 10 30. The movie starts, actually about 10.10, 10, the movie starts at 10.45. I'm like, we're going to make it, we're going to make it. Nah, we, we didn't make it, so we said, there's one at 11.50. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, before we, before we do that, though, let's go get a snack. You know, let's go to McDonald's. Come on, bro. <laughs> have that double cheeseburger. Hold <laughs> up in the parking lot. You know, it's 11 o'clock. I'm dozing off. <laughs> wife just sitting there, we was quiet, just sitting in the car, waiting for them to let that heat kick in on us. We just looked at each other and said, not, not tonight. <laughs> not tonight. We went on and went home. It's always, it's always nice to have this special time together. Uh, <laughs> Even if it's just sitting in the car staring at each other. That was a good time. We do thank you for your continued prayers uh, on our behalf. And, Open school, and we're going to be finishing up here. We got finals coming up next week, and we just we just can't wait for that. Uh, we'll really start getting excited about things once we clear through uh, December. Then we'll, we'll be in good shape. But thank you all for your continued uh, prayers in that event. Amen. As we get going this morning, uh, I will ask you uh, if any of you, uh, you guys remember some point in your life when you went to school? You remember that very first day of school? You met the teacher, you got an idea of who was around, you know, who was in your class, All right. best friend, yeah. enemy, uh -huh. maybe the boyfriend, the girlfriend, and the teacher, uh, probably in that first day or even the second day of school, gave you what we call a syllabus or a prospectus or a guideline sheet, right. protocol. <laughs> this is how you are to respond in my class. These are the expectations. If you don't meet these expectations, there's going to be some consequences. Y'all remember that mm -hmm. in school? Yeah. Yeah. And then we went on and, and got jobs. Most, if not all of us. And you remember that you know, when you got hired, your, your orientation? Remember that? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. They called all of you into one room. Uh, yeah. And they gave you a handbook yeah. that laid out the guidelines and policies and expectations while you're on the job. You know, show up on time. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you clock in. Make sure you right. clock out. All right. Make sure you follow the rules of the director or whoever is working over you. And just to make sure that you actually did follow those guidelines, there was a process which you all may identify as the evaluation process. Every now and then, boss calls you into the office. Mr. Williams, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Call you into the office, and they kind of go over the rubric or the guidelines with you. Are you meeting? These expectations, there's a check here, you've met that. Uh, there's a check here, you've met that, and so forth. Yep. The same idea is true for us as Christians. Amen. When we put Christ on in baptism, <coughs> there are set guidelines and expectations All right. that we uh, All right. actually had to meet and are still called to meet as long as we're here on this earth. Amen. 
And I will retreat real quick at if any of you have been in the military. Yep. There's a set of expectations, are there not? Mm -hmm. My soldiers out there? Uh -huh. And, you know, quite different in the school setting and maybe in the workforce. The military is a little different because, you know, if you didn't meet your expectation, you, you didn't just suffer. You got to but who all suffered? Yeah. Your whole group, your platoon, your squad, your unit, they suffer. And, uh, you know, if you're the weak link, sometimes there are consequences. Yeah. All right. I was watching a film where, uh, you know, a guy didn't do what he's supposed to do, so they decided to give him a cold red. Mm. And he didn't make it through that. And I said to myself right then, the only cold red I want anyone to give me is a Mountain Dew. The only cold red y'all can give me if I miss an expectation. But we parallel that idea, and this is actually the title of our piece today, is are you in alignment with God's expectation? Do you know what God's expectations are of you as a Christian? Do you know what God's expectations are of you if you're not a believer? Whether you believe or not, he has certain protocols and expectations of all of us here. Right. Let's find out if you are. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Let's take a look at verse 24. Now keep in mind here, Paul is writing a letter to those in Colossae yeah. to encourage them and to also forewarn them of certain things that have come to pass. Before we do verse 24, I do have to ask you this question. How would you respond if you received a letter from somebody you didn't know, never met, and you know that person's in jail? And that letter is telling you how you should live your life according to Christ's guidelines. Mm. All right. You think that would seem a bit odd? You go in your mailbox, you get a letter from something. Okay, I don't know who you are. Okay, it's coming from such and such incarceration center. Okay, I'll open it up. And all that's laid out in this letter is how to live your life according to how God has called you to live? All right. Now, some of us, if we're honest, take that letter and throw the thing away. <laughs> yeah. Some of you might be a little curious about it. You might uh, take a picture of it on yourself. Or you might put it on YouTube. Hey, guys, look what I got. All I got right. this letter from some dude that's in jail. Yeah. Telling me how to live my life. But you locked up. All right. It doesn't quite make sense. And there are people that are picking with Paul about this idea because he is in prison at the time as he sends this letter to those in Colossae. But he gives four main expectations that God has of all of us if we really, truly call ourselves Christians. All right. Let's take a look at verse 24 with me. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body which is the church. Mm -hmm. Would you please look at someone next to you and tell them God expects Christians to rejoice in their sufferings? Now, one way or the other, we're all going to suffer. Whether you believe or don't, you will suffer as you live in this world. And really, the word suffer really means to endure hardship, to endure pain. Paul says, you're going to suffer in three ways. One, you're going to suffer for Christ. Well, what does it mean to suffer for Christ? If you're suffering for Christ, it actually means that you've been counted worthy All right. in which to do so. Uh -huh. Sometimes we feel that when we're suffering, we ought to be ashamed for suffering for Christ. We sometimes ask ourselves the question, why me? Or woe is me because I'm suffering due to this different circumstance that I'm in, a situation. Well, the Bible implies, and Paul is saying here, when you suffer for Christ, it means you've been counted worthy. Right. It means God trusts you uh -huh. to deal with this particular trial or tribulation that you're going through. He trusts you, and he knows he can count on you. Let's go to Acts chapter 5 and 41. It's a very key verse for us. Acts 5 and 41. This is illustrating how the apostles suffered for Christ and how they rejoiced. 41 says, So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. The apostles were taken, they were beaten, they were whipped, Persecuted, thrown out. 
And a lot of us would probably would want to get back at him for that. All right. But as Christians, we're called to rejoice and thank God even for the things that we do suffer. Now, I must clarify. That doesn't mean go to your local bank, rob it. Yeah. Get locked yeah. up and say, you know, I'm suffering for the Lord. <laughs> you knew I needed that money. I'm suffering for Christ right now. I bear the afflictions. No, no. That's something to be ashamed of. You're not suffering for Christ when you lie all the time. You try to work your way around different yeah. scenarios. That ain't suffering for Christ. Turn with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4. And first, let's go, uh, let's go to verse 15, 15 and 16. The Bible says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Oh. Stay out of my business. And that one hits home. But let's go further to verse 16. He says, don't suffer for that kind of stuff. In other words, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian... Let him not be what? Ashamed. Ashamed. But let him what? Glorify. Glorify God in this manner because he counts you worthy to go through what you're going through at this time. Paul says, you will suffer for Christ as I suffer for Christ. And what makes Paul a little more special in the sense that he also suffers for the Gentiles. And there's a reason he's suffering for the Gentiles, which we'll illustrate here shortly. But because he's working to bring the Gentiles to Christ, he suffers in that manner because there are others who don't agree with what they think is his philosophy, but it actually comes from God. All right. We will suffer at times in front of non-believers. Yeah. Do you know why we suffer at times in front of non-believers? It ain't got nothing to do with us. Sometimes the things that we go through every day have nothing to do with us whatsoever. Amen. Sometimes we're quick to say, I don't know, did I sin? <laughs> okay, was it that... Was it that time when I didn't speak? Or was it that one time where, yeah. where this happened? Not necessarily, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes you go through hardships so that those who don't know God can see God in you and see how you rejoice in your suffering. So they can look at you and see there may have been a loss in the family. You may have lost something that was very dear to you. You may have lost your job. You may have gained a sickness that you didn't want to gain or get access to. And right. people are watching to see how you're going to respond. Now, if you're functioning yeah. like a light, you're going to be watched. That's right. That's right. If you're not functioning like a light, you're just like everybody else. All right. That's dark can't see dark. But I assure you, if you are a light, <laughs> rest assured, People will watch you. Amen. So not only do we suffer for Christ, but we suffer in front of a non-believer so that they can be drawn closer to him.